He was already told, don't come back. But he went right back, lived there with the apartment. Neighbor two doors down from her, them got mad at him. Well, got mad at the, uh, got mad at the uh, manager because her boyfriend was trespassed off the property. And so because her boyfriend was trespassed off the property, it's not right that Stephen lives with, with Rebecca there. Rebecca. And so she turns him in. Police comes out and they arrest him. Throw him in jail. They wouldn't... Here's the other side. He was also on probation for theft second. And so when he was arrested for this, there was a probation hold that was placed on him and he was going to go to prison. You know why? Because the probation officer could not release him to go back out into society knowing that he was going to go back and live in that apartment. Uh, it, was, it was vicious. It was vicious. And I tell you, I, I almost dove off the deep end before I knew it. You know, what are we going to do? And I, I just started working at Madison. You know, <laughs> how, are, how do the elders respond to this situation? I did, I don't know my elders very well when I first started working there. I didn't know how far they would go out with me on these types of situations. And there I was. Well, I'll tell you what happened. The elders helped move that family out of the project. They moved them out of the project. He was released from the probation violation to go Back home. But let me, let me stop there and say this. Before all that came down, they were baptized. Uh, they, I married them. Let me say that. So Tuesday, I married them. Tuesday night, they were baptized. And then the next night when they went home from Wednesday night services is when he was arrested. <laughs> and so it just seemed like one domino effect after the other. Uh, and someone described it as peeling an onion. You know, you start with one layer, you get to another layer, and you, it's just as smelly and cry. You just pour tears over it. But uh, anyway, so how far are you prepared to go to help? And what is the church willing to do? Well, these types of things need to be discussed before you offer anybody a blanket statement as to what, you know, come to us and we will help. Sit down and, and discuss these things. All right, so now strategy. How, how do you set up your strategy? Well, what I've, what I've suggested doing is building teams. Uh, you have a team that's, that helps in their spiritual mentoring, uh, their Bible study. This would be an outgoing couple, one that, that doesn't mind going into some of the most deplorable situations you can find. And you go out there, and, and you're, you're the support for the, for the spiritual side. You have maybe some that could do financial, financial counseling, fi financial mentoring. And so you develop, send, send some of your uh, uh, members to uh, maybe financial peace or, or crown uh, financial seminars or something like that to prepare them to help counsel these types of, of situations. Then you have life skills a couple that is devoted to helping the, the, whoever you find in developing better life skills, such as uh, how to cook meals cheaper than what they normally do, how to save on your power bill, uh, things that we may know second nature to us, they in certain situations had never had an opportunity to learn. Tell you about Rebecca's situation. Rebecca's mom died when she was four years old. She moved out of the house when she was 15 and was living with a man uh, after a man. Uh, you know, had her nose broken several occasions, her arm broken, her fingers and toes broken. It, and, and then she finds Stephen in the midst of this. So she's coming out of a, a life of turmoil, 
and now the church is offering them a life of peace, I tell you, it is a struggle for them to accept peace in their life after living through all, all that trouble. So as you develop uh, your strategies for, uh, for your benevolent work, think along the same lines of, of, uh, of how to move them and transform them with the gospel of Christ. And the only way to do that is, well, not the only way, but a major way to do that is how? Hmm? Benevolence, evangelism, and letting them be around you. Uh, they will go through stages, and you will think that they are attached at your hip. You know why? Security. What happened was, we had separated the bond between uh, that family and the influence of their past. They had nowhere else to turn but to the church. And if we ask them to sever those bonds, who are we to say, well, we're only going to help you so much? Oh, I tell you, uh, the elders at Madison, they were, they were of a... I, I was... I, I wept when they said, how dare we pull this family out of that situation and then think about leaving them. Wow. To have a, have a church family like that, and, and you know, uh, they're struggling, they're going to slip, they're going to fall, they're going to make mistakes as they learn. They're, they're, it's like children learning a new way of life. But it's a beautiful thing to see a family like that come up that way. And you know what I tell them? I say, you know, Stephen, a lot of people are depending upon you. And he would say, well, yeah, I know church members are hoping that we always do the right thing. And they, I, you know, they know, he says, in my heart, I know I'm going to do the right thing. Uh, and Because and, my motto to him is, do the next right thing. That's my motto to him. And, and I said, no, you're not get, it's not the church members. Because let me tell you, my church family is going to help. If it's not you, they're going to help someone else. What is depending upon you are those that are following after you. And because you are transforming your life, then you are going to be a conduit in which Christ is going to reach people that Madison could have never reached. Madison is an affluent congregation. We are uh, engineers. I believe every deacon at Madison is an engineer. They they are very analytical. You know they <laughs> they are. Uh, 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 oh, I'm being recorded. Uh, uh, you you know the difference between an extrovert engineer and an introvert engineer. <laughs> an, an, an introvert engineer looks at his own shoes and an extrovert looks at your shoes. That's the, that's the difference in the two. Uh, but but the, they, they, they uh, have set a plan and, and their overall plan is to evangelize the Madison area. That's why I am there. And they believe that with with uh, my uh, involvement in their work and and uh, and kind of smoothing out, uh, connecting uh, the ministries with evangelism uh, will will greatly benefit them. Um, and so I've spoken quite a bit about uh, uh, about the, the the project thanks and about the gift drive and the follow up with it. And, and I hope that I'm giving you the impression that. It's not just a program. It is a transformation that you are trying to work through, uh, help another person work, their, work through their life. It's Christian principles in place with the help of assistance where they need it. And the idea is that you move them beyond being receivers into being givers. 